what really strikes me is that uh, I think these uh, these paintings were done in the middle 50s, and at that point uh, the Cobb family was still trying to grow cotton a little bit over in Hart County, Georgia. And if you if you look in the murals and you see see something called the stilliards, uh, this is what was used to. Uh, these are in the, uh, uh, in the mural, and uh, I've seen these things used. Uh, many times to uh, weigh cotton. Uh, the only difference uh, was that you know, after the cotton was weighed, you put it on a pickup truck instead of uh, a, a wagon. So I think that in the, if you contextualize it in the 1950s, people probably connected uh, more to the to the scene than, of course, they would now, where not that many people grow cotton. It represents every stage of the process from picking uh, to ginning. So he's he's putting that uh, those all together, and of course he's using what could have been the prototype of Eli Whitney's original gin there. I'm not sure uh, you know, whether you would have actually seen a gin operating that way, but certainly uh, almost nobody's picks cotton by hand anymore. So I think they, uh, you know, they probably had uh, um, more compelling historically in some ways uh, in the 50s. You understand the, the problematic aspects of the, of the paintings today because depictions of, of black people, which, uh, um, you know, it makes it seem as though they were doing just fine uh, under slavery and uh, didn't seem particularly stressed or, or what have you. And, and of course, there's a lot at the, at the same time that this school was sort of evolving. There was a lot of art that was social realism that was, was showing how hard the lives of people who labored uh, really was so. This regionalist approach is a, is a little bit of a departure from from uh, from that genre. But um, I think the, the big problem for for the South and the big problem for generally discussing symbols or symbolic representations of the past is that there have been a number of incidents of, of African Americans objecting to uh, to depictions of the slave experience that were in fact too realistic. It, they, they found them humiliated and embarrassing and just painful to to watch. But when you when you start thinking about uh, cleansing the, the the landscape, the, the, the virtual as well as the the actual landscape of all the reminders of this this past, it's it's as though you're sort of erasing uh, Georgia's identity. Um, you know, you can't. Uh, you know, you, you just can't do that kind of thing. I mean, you know, if you if you if you say, well, we can't take, we're going to take away everything that might be offensive uh, to to black people a generation or so down the road, everybody's going to be wondering what we shall overcome means because you know they, the symbols of what was overcome will all be gone. The reminders, and so you know, I, I I'm I'm hoping that that we're eventually going to sort of come to terms uh, with. Uh, with understanding that, that if you're going to do justice to the Georgia's past, the South's past, you're going to have these juxtapositions uh, that are going to to sort of uh, always seem to clash in, in clashing perspectives. Uh, the imagery is going to be striking in some cases, but uh, you know, I mean, I think it's it's very telling that Lana's taught tourist attractions are the Stone Mountain Carving and the Martin Luther King Center. I mean, the, the, to me, that's the way it should be, because I mean, that's basically where this Georgia, Atlanta, came from.